everyone, welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be showing you 10 of my favorite bedtime storybooks that I love to read with my kids. If you don't know, I have a one year old and a four year old. So these books will be catering to those age groups. So if you're interested to see what books I have picked for this video, then keep on watching. with the basic books um, that are more catered for like babies to one-year-olds this is the first one I like so I'm sure everyone knows about spot um, it's a classic book and I really like these hardcover books for young children because they can't rip the pages so this is the night night spot book um, and it is very very basic very simple print um, illustrations it's got, you know, only a couple of words on each page. Um, but I really like to read this to my daughter when she was really young as her bedtime story because it was simple for her to understand and it was fast as well because kids, obviously, babies don't last very long through books. So you want to make sure you're just reading them quick, simple books and things that have interesting illustrations in them. So this is my first favorite book. I feel like for babies, they are really drawn to touch and feel books or pop out books or things that have like a flood that they can reveal, you know, something underneath it. So I really like this book for that reason. This is the Twinkle Twinkle Little Star book. I'm sure everyone knows the Twinkle Twinkle Star um, song or nursery rhyme. Um, so that is pretty much what this book is, but it's done in a really fun and cute way. So it's got these little slides here that you can pull up and down and it reveals the owl's eyes and then it goes along and um, the text is pretty much just the song um, but as you read it or sing it to your child they have these little interactive oops, um, things to do throughout the book. So again these are very good for younger children because it's only one sentence per page or per double page um, so you'll get through the book very quickly, um, but it also is interactive and really fun with lots of bright colours. The next bedtime story that I like for one-year-olds or babies and one-year-olds is this one here. It's called Good Night Little One with the little koalas on the front. And again, I really like this because it's got simple text, short text, and big bold illustrations that are bright and fun and not too overcrowded like I find um, pages that have too many things on one page then it kind of confuses and overstimulates the child so what I really like about this is that it refers to different body parts so it's got good night little one it's time for bed good night chin and good night head so we do the actions as I'm reading it to my daughter and I feel like reading this story to her has really helped to learn her body parts as well. So it's really cute. So this one is Goodnight Cheeks. So I usually just rub her cheeks. And it says Goodnight Nose. And little giraffes are kissing each other and I'll usually tap her nose. Goodnight Feet. So you can tickle their little feet. Goodnight Toes. Goodnight Hand. And she loves this one because the tongue's sticking out. She usually likes to stick her tongue out and copy the picture. And then good night thumb. I usually give her thumb a little kiss. Good night tummy. And this one's really funny. Good night bum. She gets a kick out of this one. She always points to the bum and makes like a farting noise. <laughs> Super cute. And then the last page just says, Good night little one. Lay down your head. It's time to sleep. It's time for bed. Okay, the next book that's suitable for one-year-olds is this one here. This one's called Before I Go to Sleep. Um, I really like the size of this book too because it has really bold illustrations and obviously large illustrations as well. So I won't read all of it, but again, with the whole concept of, you know, not too much print um, and then really nice bold illustrations. Um, like so. So I just flicked through a couple of the pages. Um, this one is just about the little boy drifting off to sleep and using his imagination um, and describing what he can see and where they can go on adventure with all his animals before it unwinds and goes to sleep at night. 
So here they're going on a little boat because his father read him a book about going on a boat for one of his bedtime stories. And now it's like he's dreaming about going on a boat. Um, that's them going over grandma's house. So this one's a very, um, very much related to using your imagination and drifting off and dreaming. Um, and this one's also about, you know, saying goodnight to the things that you see that go past. And this one's saying goodnight to the ducks. Good night to the moon and the stars. And then at the end of the book, um, we're saying good night to the child and they have drift off to sleep. So really like this book. It's really cute and fun and again uses imagination and creativity. So really cute book to read to your toddler. The next book um, where I guess we're moving more on to, you know, one and up now but you know it just depends on your child's abilities and how long their attention span is this is another twinkle twinkle little star book but what i like about this is not your typical just your twinkle twinkle little star song um it actually adds to that so the first page and this is why i say that this is more for um probably for one-year-olds and up because it does have um, a lot more text in this book um, but again, it still has the fun and bold illustrations and simple illustrations, not overcrowded. Um, so on this first page, it has the Twinkle Twinkle Little Star nursery rhyme all on just the one page, whereas the other book I showed you had the whole song throughout the book. So this one will, sh will go through the song on the first page. But then as you go on, it kind of expands and goes on from that song. So this one says... Sparkle, sparkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Peeking through the silent trees. High above the deep blue sea. Sparkle, sparkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. So, like I mean, like it just goes on, um, like expands from the typical um, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star song. And again, I just love these illustrations in this book. They're so fun and simple. And very bright so that's that one then I really love this little nursery rhyme that they've added to twinkle twinkle little star and the last two pages says twinkle over twinkle over towns and trees fields and farms lakes and seas twinkle twinkle up above for me and for the one I love which is so cute and sweet so that's that one there the next book is a quite a classic book and I'm sure you've seen this one around or heard of it before and this one's called Goodnight Moon. I've got the paperback one of this one but if you can get the hard copy I would suggest getting the hard copy because my kid has already well my daughter has already started to bend these pages so um, it's just harder to maintain so if you can get the harder copy sorry the hardcover copy of this one then I would recommend that one rather than the soft copy. But this one's a classic, like I said, really cute and simple book for like a one-year-old or a toddler um, and even two-year-olds and so forth. So um, it's got more in the illustrations with this one. So it's not just one image or one object. It's got quite a few of things happening in the image. Um, but the text is quite simple still with only a couple of sentences per page. Um, and I'm sure you know what this book is about. Um, if you haven't, I would recommend that you do check out this book because it's really cute and a really classic bedtime story book for children. Um, but I really like it because it does have black and white pictures in the book as well as really fun, colourful pictures in there as well. Um, so again, this is just setting them up for bedtime, saying goodnight to everything. And they can actually point to the objects as you read what you're saying goodnight to. So if you're saying, you know, goodnight clocks and goodnight socks, you can say, you know, where are the socks and where's the clocks and get them to point to them. So that's that one there. Definitely a favourite of ours. And this book I actually bought for my son Christopher when he was a baby and now my daughter Adriana reads it at bedtime and they both still love it a lot. And it's this one here is called The Owl Who Was Afraid of the Dark. So what I love about this one is, um, again, it doesn't have a lot of print on there, a lot of text, um, but it has some interactive things that you can do with the book. 
So it's got these little, um, I guess, little cutouts, these little flaps to reveal some more little foxes down here. And it's just about an owl that is actually scared of the dark and about how um, the moon talks to the owl and says, you know, even though I'm not here, I'm always watching over you. So it's a really cute idea and topic um, to go through with your child. Um, this one has little pull-outs of a letter. And my son Christopher is obsessed with letter writing and mailing and playing postman Pat in the house. So he gets a kick out of this book because it does have little letters attached to it. And this letter is just saying, um, you know, the little owl is asking his friend to come flying through the night in the forest. Um, but the poor little owl is too scared of the dark, so he rejects the offer. This is the part where the moon is saying to the owl not to be scared, that he'll watch over him each and every day, even if he can't see him. Um, so it's a really cute book to say, you know, even if, you know, someone's not there present in your life constantly, they still are there in your heart and, you know, watching over you. So I think this is a really sweet concept and a really good um, topic to kind of discuss with your child and then at the end it has this little envelope that you can pull out and this is the letter to the owl saying yes I do want to go flying through the night let's do it tonight and the last page is really cool opens up like this and you see the two little friends flying through the sky with the moon behind them it's a really cute book and like I said interactive as well so definitely a winner and a favorite in our household the other two books I want to show you is actually from the same author and it's these two here I love these books I'm not sure if she has any more but if she does I'll definitely look them up and try and get her whole collection because I just love the way that she writes these stories and the illustrations are great. So the first one here is called Wish Upon a Dream. Um, and again, this is suitable for toddlers, I would say two and up maybe, um, only because there's more text, slightly more text, and more happening in the illustrations as well. This one's about using your imagination and about things you can dream about when you're going to sleep at night. Um, I just love the illustration, the details in this story. Really beautiful. Like this one, you can see the little boy here dreaming of all these different things here. And it's all about, you know, going to bed peacefully and dreaming of sweet dreams and making your wishes and dreams come true. And it's got here, yeah, for everyone, the world is a wish for the child, for the rabbit and the fish. Wish upon your dreams tonight and may your dreams last until daylight. It's just a really sweet story. Um, so one I would definitely recommend. It is a little bit longer than the other books. So like I said, it's probably more suitable for two-year-olds and up. I do try and read it with my daughter, who is one. Um, but she kind of gets a bit nancy by the end of it and doesn't last through the whole book. So that's why I say probably two and up. And again, all about imagination, dreams, and making your wishes come true. So another one from that author is called Goodnight Little One. This one's really sweet. And I actually read this one to my one-year-old, and it's fine. She loves it because there's not much going on in the illustrations, and most of the pages have simple text. So this is one that you could definitely probably use for a one-year-old. Um, so this one just says, Little Donkey on the Hill, sitting there so very still. Making faces at the skies. Little donkey, close your eyes. So every second page or so, they have, you know, the animal unwinding ready for bed. And then the next page is them going to sleep. So we always, you know, touch her eyes when we read those pages and get her sleepy and ready for bed. So this one's the monkey. And then the monkey's going to bed. And the birds and so forth and so on. So... Really cute um, book. At the end, it does have a little child that's tucked in bed, ready to go to sleep. And this is when we always say, you know, time for Adriana to go to sleep as well. And we touch the child's eyes and we touch her eyes. And it really gets her in that mode of 
Yep, it's bedtime now. It's time to go to sleep. The very last book my son's been playing with her here on the couch because it is his absolute favourite. And this is more going up to the toddler preschool stage. And it is my very last book and it's called Goodnight Construction Site. We got this book for him, gosh, I think it was two and a half or three. And he absolutely loves this book. It is quite wordy. For example, it says, Down in the big construction site, the tough truck works with all they might to build a building to make a road to get the job done load by load. It's not simple text, it's quite comprehensive, um, a lot more wordy than the other books. But he just absolutely loves this book. And as you can see, a lot happening in a lot happening in the illustrations, a ton of action. Um, you know, it's not just one object on per like per page. There's a lot happening at once. So definitely more suited for you know two three year olds, I would say. And more, I mean, he's a four year old now, and he still loves this book. I introduce this book to a child, I would say they should be at least two or three. Um, to be able to sit through this and actually understand it and enjoy it for what it is. So that's the other pages there to show you quickly. Obviously, I'm not going to read through this because it's quite lengthy. Um, but it's all about the construction trucks, you know, working hard and then at the end of the day, unwinding and getting ready for bed and actually going to sleep. So really cute book. It goes through all the different trucks as well. So this one's the cement mixer, that's churning and spinning, and then we have a dump truck here that's getting, that's working hard, and then on the next page he's going to bed. So similar to the other storybook that I just showed you about the animals going to sleep, this one's focused on trucks going to sleep and unwinding and calling it a day. Whoops. Um, that's the excavator and yeah and then the last page just says construction all tucked in tight the day is done turn off the light good work today now shh good night so really cute and sweet book and my son just absolutely loves this one so definitely a winner if you have a little boy around the ages of three i would say they would really enjoy this one so that's all my bedtime storybooks that i want to share today thank you so much for watching my video if you have liked this don't forget to give it a big thumbs up subscribe down below to see more videos from me and if you have any other suggestions for bedtime storybooks, please leave them in the comments below. I'd love to read them and get more for my collection. And I hope you all have a lovely day. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.